Hey guys, welcome to another episode. Today we're going to talk about regular expressions. And this episode is going to be the basics. The 101s, the how to do, what is it, etc. So what is regular expressions, or regex as we call it in the industry? Well, it's a way for you to be able to match a pattern and test against it. So for example, you could use it for form entry for an email address to make sure that it's a valid email address and not just some made up line of with no ats, no dot something or other. And it's important to be used in things like form validation, as well as other things where you would like to test against something. For example, is the phone number only contain digits? That's another good example. So today we're just going to show you how to create some simple regular expressions using the very basic stuff. And in the next episode, we'll start doing more complicated things like how to match against an email address or maybe how to find out if they're using a Amex card versus a Visa. So let's get into some code. Okay, and we're back in the code now. And here is the first one. This is the simplest of the regular expressions, and this is just a single match. So let me explain the code a little bit, and this will help in the future ones that we look at. So here we just have a string, and this could be coming from a form, or it could just be a string like I have here. And then we have the pattern that we wish to look for. And inside this part here, this is what I'm looking for. So I'm looking for the word James, which we know appears here. And then here we're using the string and we're going to match it to the pattern. And then we're just gonna re we're just gonna put the array into an string so that we can see the result. And then we're gonna log it out to see if I know how to code. So let's just run this one real quick and say, And what you can see is that James is returned right here. James loves regex James. But what happens if I do this? Surely that will be returned to James matches James. Cannot read property of two string to null. Obviously I have no null handlers, but that means they didn't find the pattern James. Now this is important because in regex, you can set whether you want it to be sensitive or insensitive. So the insensitive match looks very similar. I changed a few words here, but as you can see, there's now this slash I, and this is what they call a modifier. Now this modifier tells you, I don't care if it's uppercase, lowercase, um, some uppercase, some lowercase, anything like that. We just want to know, is this in any way have the word James in it? So let's run this one. And you can see that it returned James from here, regardless of the character. We have another one called global. And this one looks for James anywhere in this string. So you can look through this whole string for as many Jameses as possible. So let's run this one and then let's talk about what happens. So now it's returning an array with two Jameses in it because it found it at position zero and then further down the line. Now you can use this in many different variety of ways but usually this is because you don't know in the string um, one, where it is, and two, how many of them there are, right? So if you needed to know how many emails were returned in a string, you could use this and get them all in an array and then do whatever you needed to. So what about if the string was on two lines or more, right? That's the important thing. Like you're not just going to get a string of text that looks like this every time you could get a multi-line match. 
Now multi-line match just looks for James anywhere in here. Right? So it doesn't matter if it's on this first line, third line, fourth line, fifth line. So what I did here was I am going to log out the string so you can see what it looks like. And then I log out the result. And the idea behind here is this slash, this M here will, will basically do a multi-line. So let's run this one. Node multi-line. Nope. Yep. That's the right one. Go. So this is what it looks like. And this is what the regex pattern is searching for. And as you can see again, James was returned. So the good thing about regex is you can actually combine multiple things into one check. So this one checks for multi-line, insensitive, and as many as there are in here. So as you can see in this giant set of text, there's a James over here and a James here. So we should get returned two Jameses. And there we go. James here, James here have been returned. Fairly simple. Now that stuff is the basic um, usage of multi-line, insensitive, global, and then just a simple match. Then we've got things like alternative. Now this is like an or statement. So alternative, you can be like, I want to know if there's any reds or any greens, for example. So please return reds or greens to my array. So when we run this one, green, red, green. So there's a green here, there's a red here and a green here, but none of the other ones match. So it's sort of like adding an or statement. So we could write another or here and write blue hit save and now we get green red green blue so you can see that you can kind of use that if you're like well i want to know if there is any vowels or any numbers and you could do that using this kind of pattern so we've talked about a lot of stuff but what about things like digits well let's talk about how you can do only digits. So similarly, I'm 100% sure that you'll love regex. Otherwise, I'll give you a dollar. So there's two ones in here. And this pattern right here, slightly different, but it's only ever going to look for the number one. And it's going to ignore everything else. So we can do node. One comma one, and that's true. There are only two ones here. Now this can be used in a range of digits, right? So that that's kind of good. You know that there's some ones in there, but what what happens if you want to know if there's one, two, four? So this is going to look for one, two, three, and four in this pan. And this time I'm 124% sure you'll love regex. Otherwise, I'll give you $77. So let's look at this one. And as you can see, it returns one, two, and four, which are all in here. And if this was 33, it would return those two. So we have one more to look at here. And that's the group match. And alternatively, not in the group. So a group match looks for a range of digits or numbers. So for in this example, X and M. So it's looking for any time X or M is in this big old sentence here. So let's try it out and see what happens. Okay, and apparently I like to write the letter M more than I like to write the letter X. And in here you can see there's an X 
we highlight them, there should only be a three, and there it is. And then if we highlight the M, there is a bunch. And we're only looking for lowercase, so any of the big uppercase ones are missed. And you can add that modifier and look globally for all X's and M's with uppercase or lowercase. And finally, we have one more, and it's not in this group. This little tiny piece makes a big difference. This, to you, basically says, I want everything returned that is not this. So it's almost like the exclamation point equals, right? Where you're checking to see if something is not true. It's the same with this. It is not X or M. So if we run this final one, node, not in this group, you're going to get all of this, including the spaces. That's very important. Later in the next video, you'll be able to see that spaces have their own special way. and We can use those to manipulate things in a certain way. Well, guys, that has been the episode on regular expressions. If you did enjoy the video, go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. If you like my content, make sure you subscribe. You would be surprised how many people are watching my videos and not subscribing. And if you really, really want to know when I go live, check out my Twitter. It's James underscore R underscore Perkins. And that will get you all the latest stuff from me as well as you can ask me anything, send me a DM, whatever you need help with, I'm here for you. Until next time, have a good one.